When we look at the distributions of different variables, one of the most helpful things to start out with is a measure of central tendency. And that's what we'll be talking about in this video. So overall, what we're looking at is this. We want numerical summaries for our quantitative data. And there are two ways to look at the center of the data. And those are our measures of central tendency. What happens when it tends towards the center? The first one is called the mean, and the second one is called the median. And then we also look at variation. And to look at variation, we look at the range, the quartiles in the interquartile range, the variance, and the standard deviation. And we're going to focus right now on the center of the data, the mean and the median. The mean is a very traditional measure of the center of data, and it's also called the average. So I'm sure that you've calculated many averages over time, especially as you look at your own grades and try to figure out what's going on. And what do you do when you find an average? You add together all the values and you divide by the number of values. So as an example, here are some test scores 67, oops, 67 plus 88 plus 75 plus 92, we would add all those up and divide by 4. When we add all of them up, like I did over here, we get 322. When we divide that by 4, we get 80.5. So that's the average of these four test grades, 80.5. We call that in statistics, we call that the mean. The other measure of central tendency that we talk about in statistics is the median. It's a more resistant measure of the data center. And by resistant measure, what we mean is when you have an extremely high value or an extremely low value, that does not change the median significantly. It would change the mean significantly. Like on those test scores, instead of the lowest test score being, I think it was a 65, instead of it being a 65, if it were a zero, you all know that that would drag that mean down a lot lower. But it wouldn't have changed the median at all. So when you don't have symmetrical data, the median tends to be a better measure of the center because it is more resistant. So that's a key word right there, resistant. The median is the middle set of values. So to find a median, the first thing that you must do is list all your data in order, ascending order, minimum to maximum. Then if you have an odd number of values, say you have 15 values, the median's the middle value. The middle value would be the eighth value. For an even number of values, the median is the average of the two middle values. So say you had 14 values, the median is between the seventh and the eighth value. And you would add those two up, divide by two to get their average. So really helpful way to help you find where the median is, what the position is of the median, is to take the number of values that you have, add one, and divide by two. That'll help you find the position where you would find that median value. So here we have a few examples. In example one, first thing we look at and we say, is this in order? It is. Two, four, six is in ascending order. Ascending means it goes up. Like you ascend a staircase, you go up. 
since it's in ascending order, it's the middle value. So the median, which we use a capital M for our symbol for that, median is 4. Now in our example 2 data, we look and again it is an ascending value, in ascending order. And now we look for the middle. Well, where's the middle here? It's right between these two. It's between the 4 and the 6. So to find the median, we're going to have to add the 4 and the 6 and divide by 2. And that's going to give us 5. So the median for our example 2 data is 5. Example 3 data, we look at it and it's not in ascending order. Now your temptation is to say there's three values, the middle one must be the median. But it's not the middle one until you put it in ascending order. When we do that, we get 2, 4, 6. And again here, the, medi the median would be 4, just like in the first example. Now let's take a minute to just talk about a comparison between the mean and the median. The distribution is symmetric, so remember we talked about symmetric as being you can put a line down the middle and it's pretty much or close to mirror image one side to the other. That's symmetric. Well, if the distribution you have is symmetric, then the median and the median are going to be really close together. And if you have an exactly symmetric distribution, the mean and the median are going to be exactly the same. But in a skewed distribution, the mean is farther out in the long tail than the median. So say you had a distribution that looked something like this, okay? That is skew right because the long tail is to the right. And the median will be somewhere here-ish, where half of the values are to the left and half of the values are to the right. But the mean, so let's label that, that's a, somewhere in there is where the median will be. But the mean which we refer to by the symbol X bar that is going to be further out towards the tail. These really high values out here they pull it that way because again it's not as resistant as the median is. So here's a question for you to think about. Recent newspaper article in California said that the median price of a single family homes sold in the past year in the local area was $136,000 and the mean price was $149,160. Which do you think is more useful to someone considering the purchase of a home, the median or the mean? So that's something for you to think about as you process the median and the mean and as you work through some problems with them. What could have brought that mean price up so much higher than the median price? And which piece of data would you find most helpful if you wanted to buy a house?